Good afternoon, everybody, and my greetings to everyone. A blessed and prosperous New Year. And naniniwala ako na itong 2022 natin is a really challenging year, but we really need to be very strong even more, like never before na strength na meron tayo. At uh, ang kailangan na posture natin, hindi tayo madidestabilize, but we really need to posture as God directed us to be. Sa araw na ito, Magbubukas tayo ng panibagong series and I really encourage everyone to really be engaged at huwag tayo maging familiar but really receive by faith. Pag sinabing receive by faith, kailangan nakakasang ispirito. Pag sinabing receive by faith, kailangan nakaposture tayo kasado para mabuild tayo ng Holy Spirit at ng kanyang salita. Amen? Let us all be strong and let us all pray before I'm going to call the one of the select arrow that will testify today for us. At uh, naniniwala ko na sa kanyang testimony, meron tayong matututunan. Okay, let's all pray. When I say pray, let us all partner with God that we are just a voice. When you say amen to what I'm declaring, it touch something in the realm of the spirit and everything on the ground will just line up because we believe when we pray, ang ginagamit sa atin ng Panginoon ay ang boses natin, that we will be a voice. Your generation must be a voice in this season, not a noise. Kaya when we stand in prayer, one accord in the clouds, in the spirit, we are declaring something in the realm of the spirit and we will believing we are believing that god is just going to perform as we decree as we declare as we prophesy as we preach because we are his partner we as we are his ambassador we have such a position in the realm of the spirit na hindi mo man masalat ito but when you believe that we are there our prayer is Touching something in the realm of the spirit, bringing down things on the ground. Amen? For your generation. So let us all stay strong and let's all go in heaven, go to heaven. When we say go to heaven, to be in heaven is to be in the spirit. Can we believe that? To be in heaven is to really position ourselves in the spirit. Okay? Can we do that tonight with our thought? With all our spirit and our soul, spirit, soul, and body is engaged in one alignment to be in the spirit. Okay, let's go. Go in the realm of the spirit. Father God, we thank you so much for your presence that every one of us is being built by the Holy Spirit and by the, by the word that you are continually downloading into our spirit. And we believe, Lord, that what we are declaring right now is in motion to do something on the ground because you said it so. Because it is the word that we are declaring. We know that you are backing up all those words that we are prophesying. We are legislating and we are decreeing in the realm of the spirit for the generation. We thank you today, oh Father God, that your spirit will continually build us up, oh Lord God, according to the pattern whom you have given us to each and every one of us. And we believe, Lord God, that as as God of the nation and a God of generation, when we partner together with you, Lord God, things are in motion to, uh, to happen on the ground, oh Lord God. We believe, oh Lord God, and we are, as we are positioning ourselves in the realm of the Spirit seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, we know that you are the one who is performing things on the ground and we believe lord god i word that this generation oh lord god that you are building right now that you are preparing right now as ferocious and as uncompromisers oh lord god a clean and pure uncontaminated generations they are able to lord god by your grace and by the holy spirit's power to be able to do things that more than what jesus did when he was on the earth oh lord god it is according to your word oh lord we thank you so much lord god that this generations lord god a, is a company, oh Lord God, of your people, a nation that is go not going to compromise your word, but they are going to stand strong against the onslaught of the enemy towards the
their life towards their future. We are continually declaring, oh Lord God, as we take back their future of this generation, continually taking back, Lord God, their health in Jesus' name. Every sickness and diseases has no power anymore to this generation from this day onward. What we are declaring in the realm of the Spirit as we are being equipped by the power of your word, by the power of your Spirit, Lord God, to be in good health, Lord God. Sickness and diseases has no power anymore upon us in the name of Jesus. And we decree right now, Lord God, the extraordinary covering and protection and the extraordinary prophetic fulfillment, the extraordinary prosperity, oh Lord God, and provision and the extraordinary prophetic fulfillment to each one, oh Lord God, of the select arrow that are here right now in Jesus' name. We are pushing back every thought that trying to dislodge and destabilize their position, oh Lord God, from seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we decree right now that no one shall be destabilized in this hour, in this season, oh Lord God, of challenge, oh Lord God. But they are going to be very strong, oh Lord God. They are not just they are not going to be emotional at all, but they are going to operate more stronger in the realm of the spirit. They are going to operate in the dynamic of the spirit, no longer in the emotional level, no longer in a soulless level, Lord God, but in the spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you so much, Lord God, that everyone who are now here in our Zoom meetups, Lord God, will receive their portion, O oh Lord God. And they are going to be an accurate partner of God on the ground, as corporate as one accord, a generation that are so strong with an uncompromising stature before the living God, O oh Lord. We thank you that they are going to be your voice, O oh Lord God. No one will become a noise in this season, O oh Lord God, but they are going to become a voice of the Spirit, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you are making and building us to become your body on the earth, Lord, to implement thy will, to implement your kingdom on the ground, to extend and expand the kingdom mandate that we have in our generation, O oh Lord. We thank you so much, Lord God that you are the one that is continually touching their lives right now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, thank you so much, oh Lord. Thank you so much. Fine-tune our spiritual frequency right now. Everybody, fine-tune your spiritual frequency before the Lord. Fine-tune. When, when I say fine-tune, do not allow your thought that are wrong to be uh, your meditation. Do not allow that thought, that wrong thought pattern to become your meditation. Push away every wrong thing. Destroy everything right now. Fine tune, fine tune right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Spirit right now. Everybody fine tune. Let our spirit be fine tuned right now. Be fine tuned to the current frequency of heaven right now. Learn to push in the spirit. Fine tune right now. Fine tune, fine tune. Do not be casual. Do not be familiar. Do not be familiar. What you are experiencing is just natural. It's just normal. No. If it is not the will of God for you, that is natural. But we need to rise up in the supernatural dynamic of our life. Of the way we live must be in the supernatural way of living. Fine tune, fine tune to the current frequency of the of heaven right now. Current frequency of the spirit in the name of Jesus. Be strong right now. Learn to rise up. Learn how to rise up in the dynamic of the spirit even more like never before. Do it right now. Do it right now. Do not allow the thought that are wrong to lead you, but lead your mind. Learn how to lead your mind by what you have in the spirit. Learn how to lead your mind by what you have in your spirit man, in your inner man. Do not be so natural. Do not be so natural. Because you are spiritual. I am a spiritual. We are spiritual. We are extraordinary. We need not to operate in the natural. We need not to operate as casual. But we need to operate as spirit man. A spiritual man. I prophesy right now that you are the degeneration that God is building, that God is uh, equipping, that God is forming and shaping to be like his son, Jesus Christ. And I prophesy that you are the generation that will become the voice for the society, that you are the one that is going to become a part of the body of the universal church. And I prophesy and decree that you are the generation that is going to rise up to influence and invade domain of society as God's instrument, as God's mighty weapon, as God's mighty warrior. 
as God's strong body, ferocious, with an uncompromising stand according to the what is right, according to what is holy, according to what is divine, and you will never compromise anything that you have been receiving from God, and you are going to rise up continually, continuously, not to be depleted by the things of this world, but you are going to rise up in the dynamic of the Spirit. You are a generation that is going to be receiving the Elisha anointing and the grace of Elisha must be your portion, a generation that is going to receive a compounded anointing and portion, a compounded graces of the Elijah and Elisha, a prophet to the nation, and a generation that will be a workforce for the nation as God's army, that when you decree, things are in motion to be on the ground. When you prophesy, something is going to happen on the society, in the society, in your family. When you decree things in the realm of the spirit, Things are in motion for your family, for your clan, for the society, for your school, for your environment. You are the one that is going to recreate the earth. You are the one that is going to recreate the things that is on the ground by the word of God and by the spirit. Be that kind of generation that God needs in this hour, in this season, an instrument and a mighty weapon from the hands of the mighty God. You are that generation. Receive this portion of yours. Receive these graces of yours. Receive this anointing of yours to become an accurate partner of the living God on the ground as a spirit world generation walking supernaturally, extraordinarily, that all the extraordinaries become ordinary to you. All the supernatural becomes so natural to you because you are with God. You are partnering with God. You are an ambassador of God. And therefore, there shall be accuracy in your life, in your ways of living, in your lifestyle, in your thought pattern. In everything you do, there shall be an accuracy right now. In everything you, you think, there shall be an accuracy right now. Push away every wrong thoughts. Demolish everything that can hold you uh, depleted from every strength that God is infusing unto your inner man. Today, rise up, oh dear select arrow, rise up even more like never before because God is moving, God is moving, God is moving, fulfilling his words in your life, through you and in you, God is moving, God is moving in this hour, in this season. We thank you so much, Lord God, for the life of this generation that they are the one that is going to implement your will on the ground in the days to come. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Receive thy portion. Amen. So I will just like to call the one of the select arrow that is going to testify today. Pero yung dalawa nating linggo na wala tayong select arrow ay naghingi na ako ng paumanhin doon sa mga nakaschedule at extend na lang natin. Tama ba? And I will call on Levele Valdez. Siya po ang magpapatutuo sa atin. Thank you, Levi, for what the Lord has put into your heart. Ngayon pa lang, excited na kami na mabibuild ang bawat isa. At naniniwala kami na magiging kalakasan ang ibababa mo at ang mga baba, ibababa ng mga select arrows sa susunod. Levi, go, go, go. Thank you po. So, Welcome. Uh, yes po. Uh, I will start with kung ano yung pinaka kung sa ano yung pinaka center ng aking testimony today so ang center po ng aking testimony is all about connectivity so uh, ang first na i-emphasize ko is our connectivity determines our supply so it's not only the supply in material things or in financial but it's also about our supply of hope wisdom knowledge, and strength. So, ano yung aking may relate in this situation? So, alam naman natin as, as a student. So, um, I'm not apart from those challenges na we are facing in the new normal. So, katulad nung uh, testimony ni Ate Joanna, you need to be above Thus, uh, the system. You should not be under the system or with the system. So, ang 
uh, the thing that I experienced is almost similar kasi I'm being, I felt oppressed at that time when it's about our thesis. So we tried our best to, to come up with different kind of titles and it came to something na it's negative. So it didn't get approved for how many months and it's not only just one title so it really is hard to be able to submit those kind of activities when you're under pressure because at that time we are almost ending our semester so it's a bit hard for us because we are not being guided by a professor and she just gave us a key points to what we need to do and not the tips that we need to apply for that kind of activity. So it came to a point that I was so stressed and I was so, so pressured by the things that are happening. I was too overwhelmed. And then by the time that we, um, our second, I think, our second time that we had a title approval for our professor, after that meeting ended, so it's online. I really cried. So I don't, I, I know that, I know to myself that I cried because due to a uh, lack of sleep, being <gasps> emotional for how many days. So um, I was so emotional about that time. And then my mom just suddenly appeared in front of me. And then she said, come here read this, read this book. It's in Philippians. So it's in chapter four. I read that whole chapter. It said there that you don't need to worry. You don't need to, you need to be, you don't need to be emotional about it, actually, because it's a challenge. You need to face it to be able to grow, to be able, just like in a game, you need to level up. In order to level up, you need to overcome that stage. So, in short, because of the connectivity of my parents to God and my connectivity to them, it's really easy to have a backup of hope, wisdom, strength, and knowledge. So, I was really thankful for that kind of connectivity. And the next one I'm going to highlight is, our connectivity determines our destiny. Even the destiny of our generation after us. And also the generation. Because God doesn't only see us as who we are right now. God sees a generation in us. So we need to be careful. Because in the Bible, we know that there's a genealogy. Right? So why is there a genealogy in there? Because if you see it in Matthew... From the generation of Abraham to David until up to Jesus. Why is it stated in the Bible when you already have read it before? So it's a reminder that what Abraham did also reflects in his generation up to the generation that is not yet born. So the connectivity is there. So I'm going to relate this. To my aunt. I was not yet born that time. And it's only my mom at her teenage year. So I'm not clearly, I'm not going to pinpoint or going to detail the whole story. But my aunt, which is Mommy Elaine, she's now ab abroad. So I'm going to share that her connectivity, her faith to pursue even though not her whole family is there with her. That alone is something very brave of her to do, right? When you're in a place you're not very familiar with, you feel like you're foreign. So, but she didn't settle in that kind of mindset that she is different or she's not, she's not connected in that place. So she still pursued up to... And then after that, she pursued my mom in her teenage years. But my mom 
didn't really continue after that because of so many things to do. And then by the time that she was a teenager, my mom Elaine gave her a Bible. So from that, she's still connected, I know, in the spirit, though she's not physically in the church. So when that happened, she was already carrying me in her womb my mom and mommy elaine already started to really pursue hard for my mom to really join the church that's why i'm here now and i asked my mom yesterday last night to be honest i asked her na what if you weren't connected to the church what would be my name that's what I'm asking for because my name is really different, to be honest. In our school, a lot of people ask, like, your name is something out of this world. So it's really different, right? It's Levi Lay. So they're not familiar with that Levi. They only know the Levi in a anime show. So I know that I, my name is really different and I know my personality will be different, which is I'm going to tackle later. I'm going to say it later. So this part, um, my mom was not really familiar with the church mates that my mom Elaine is, uh, grew up with. And the fact that mommy Elaine chose who my godparents are, my ninongs and ninangs, and my mom is not really familiar with them, like, um, Pastor Naomi is my ninang and Pastor Hans. So she's not familiar with them, but she still obeyed. That's the thing that I'm really thankful for my mom, that she submitted to Mommy Elaine. And after that, she really pursued going to church and really knowing who God is. Right now, she's really into studying the Bible, as in super deep into details. <laughs> That's why I really can hear her um, every morning, every, every time I sleep, I would hear her and she's just studying. So I'm just there <laughs> at the corner listening to her also. But okay, back to the topic again. So I'm really trying to organize myself. So I, I need to stay and not be sidetracked. So um, after that, of course, I grew up in the church. I grew up knowing who God is in my life. So the next that I'm going to highlight is where and to whom you are connected can reflect your personality. So what does this mean in my life? Actually, it's something that other people see as different in my generation. So at my time in junior high, um, my classmates would ask me, why are your friends so less? Like you're not into pursuing to have friends. You're not trying to join other it people or a group, the very trendy group. So for me, it's like I already had friends at church, which is Betit. So if you're not familiar with me, I am from GH Maine or GH Paranaque. So I'm really close to Betty. She's a she's like a sister to me. To be connected and uh, known closer to the church, you will also be surrounded with people that can strengthen you and that you can strengthen them. So at that time, I was not really into having so many friends. I just kept myself in this circle of friends that I know I can grow with, not only physical, but also spiritual. So to be honest, I am like an introvert at that time because I really don't have friends. I will just talk to my classmates about um, some assignments or some announcements because I'm always as a, um, what do you call that? part of the school officers or class officers. So I really need to be acquainted to my classmates in order to communicate with regards of the school needs. So after that, some 
people will really adjust to me. Like they they know I'm not really that kind of normal thing or normal person to them. So for me, I don't need to adjust for them. I don't need to please them. Like one one time there is a situation that some of my classmates would really push me to have uh, a you know a relationship so for me it's really really crucial so as i stated before god sees a generation in us so it's really crucial to have a relationship even though it's just mu or it's just a puppy love it's really really a big no no for me it's something that I am aware of even when I was a little child that people around me, I already saw it, that wrong people, wrong relationship leads to something that is not pleasing to God. So for me, why would I do that? Why would I risk myself or my whole generation for something that I just want to experience for a meantime? And it really strikes me that From that time, I know that I need to strengthen my heart. I need to be able to discern what I need to pursue in my heart and my mind. And after, up till now, some people would really change me for, would really ask me for some small actions that I do, like how I sit it's something simple, right? It, like how you sit in front of a class or how you sit while you're eating. Like I always sit with my back, uh, my posture really straight. So some people would ask me like, why are you sitting like that? Why are, why are you not slouching? Like it's something that I got used to because some of my teachers in kids' church would uh would really see it as something that you need to grow in that kind of posture. Something like a small thing. So you need to posture yourself, just like how you posture in your spirit. So you need to to posture right and to straighten your posture, right? And also, why am I doing those kind of small actions? I am not the type of person that really would like to express myself. That's why testifying is not something that i do for so many people i do it for for the people that i know whom i can trust with to get some advice like pastor hans and betit and my parents it's something that i can only do for a small group of people um it's actually this is the first time that i testified in front of almost all the GH tribe uh, select arrows. So it's really a great opportunity for me to grow also. So I am not that type of person. <laughs> I also know Kuya June, so sorry for speaking too much in English. <laughs> to be connected to them is something that really blessed me throughout my whole life. And I know it will bless me also for my next generation because we already know that it is crucial for us to be connected, to not be left behind, to connect not only for yourself, but also for the people that is after you and those who are looking after you, looking up to you. So it's something that it's very like a habit already to be connected closer to the church than people outside. I think for me, it's something that I can never replace, even though some people would really see, would really offer me, like some of my classmates would really um, share some of these things that to really win me in their world so they see me as someone who is rich to be honest like financially stable um really having so many gadgets it's actually it's something that i'm blessed with because 
I really didn't ask for gadgets. I didn't ask for a phone. I didn't ask for a computer. But my classmates would see it as, wow, you came from a rich family. You're really someone famous like that. And the way I listen to music, to be honest, I am not really familiar with so many pop songs right now because I am still in my classical era. I still listen to a Mozart, to Vivaldi like that. So I'm not familiar when my classmates say that, oh, you know this new song, you know this new trend, or even TikTok. I am not using TikTok, to be honest. I'm not familiar with it. But I only hear it because of some of my friends. So it's really something that Mommy Glenn would say to us na, you don't need to compromise what you your what you received just to be in in our generation it's something very crucial because how you keep and you secure your posture right now is something that though you will you wouldn't say it for um so many generations after you but it will be seen in every generation that is after you so it is seen, not only heard, it is, uh, what do you call this, the word? It is discerned, not just seen in the natural. So that would be all. So I wouldn't take too much time of Mommy Glenn's. So <laughs> thank you. Levi, thank you so much. I really believe that what you have shared is a building material for us all and another reminder of our connectivity na miss ko bigla si mommy elaine <laughs> si mommy elaine at saka ni bitit mom's uh, bitit's mom uh, mommy bet bet ang aking mga kasabayan sa golden harvest kaya every time i saw you guys bitit and you lovely parang nakikita ko ng edad ko Ah, uh, matanda na pala ang edad ko lang, ang edad. <laughs> uh, by the way, Levi, sino ang mas panganay, your mom or Mommy Elaine? Mommy Elaine. Mommy Elaine, tama, tama. I know, siya rin ang unang na born again sa family niya, tama? Tama. Yeah, the same with me kasi siya ang mga kasabayan ko. That's why no nauna ako ng konti pumunta dito sa Saudi Arabia and then nagfall nagfalo na siya pa US. Siya magkasunod-sunod kami nila nila Bernice, sila Bernice sa England. Magkakasunod-sunod kami. They are the the batch. But anyway, what I've learned from your testimony is accurate connectivity brings result in our lives. Tingnan mo yung isa lang na nagkonekta ng tama, isa sa pamilya, isa sa clan. Isa sa yun ang mga result. Res, ang result is generation talaga. It, lagi kong sinasabi at sinishare ito sa church namin dito na your accuracy of your connectivity, generation ang result niyan lagi. Di ba yung testimony din doon ni, Ju, ni, ni 30, ni June, nung nakaraan, because of the connectivity of his siblings, result ang nangyari ay pati siya. So lahat ay nagbe-benefit ang next generation and the next generation and the generation that are yet to come pag accurate ang ating connectivity. And it's true. Through our accurate connectivity, it will always determine our supply. At kung sino ang kinokonektahan natin, yun ang magiging tayo. Kaya mag-ingat tayo sa ating connectivity. Do not connect to the worldly frequency. Just connect to the frequency, current frequency of God that is in now in motion. Huwag tayo papadeviate yung sinasabi ni Levi na dapat di ma-compromise talaga yung ating, yung binilg ni Lord sa buhay natin. Kaya kayo mga studyante, paulit-ulit nga ako, di ba? Na learn how to strategize in beating the system in the education domain. You are not going to lie, you are not going to cheat, but learn how to be strategic 
To be strategic is to operate always in the dynamic of the spirit as supernatural. Hindi ka magdudwell to what is the system, pero you need to operate above the system by strategically connecting your connecting yourselves to the God of heaven. So I believe what Levely had been shared to us today ay merong tayong natanggap at na-build sa ating spirit. Ako personally, I'm I'm blessed sa mga binaba niya, sa mga senior niya. And I, I was reminded again of that uncompromising kind of stand pag nasa system kayo sa mga eskwilahan, mga estudyante. Finish your course as a student because that is your platform to the system. But stay accurately connected to the God of Heaven kasi hindi tayo makakadecipher ng mga bagay-bagay kung hindi tayo connected. Lalo sa church, lalo sa ating mga pastor. Kaya paulit-ulit ako ang honor and respect sa mga people above us, sa mga pastor. Because our pastor is the God's representation over our lives. Kung simpleng instruction ng pastor ay hindi natin na, na obey may problema ang connectivity. Kung simpleng instruction ng nilaga, nilatag sa atin ng ating mga mahal nating pastor ay di natin masunod, nagiging casual tayo, may problema sa connectivity. Isettled ito, isettled ito. Lalo na pagdating sa mga pagkumintig-pintig na ang mga puso nyo, nako, baka naman mag-walk kayo emotion over spiritual, ha? Hindi ko sinabing maging religious, No. Pagdating na kasi sa nainlab na kayo, alam nyo ba, minsan nagiging casual na kayo sa council ng mga pastor nyo. Kaya bantayan ito na hindi kayo mga maemosyon dahil ang pag-aasawa ay si Lord ang nagtatakda, si Lord ang naghahanap, concern niya ni Lord. At kung siya, si Lord din ang, ang kailangan lang natin, hearing ear and seeing eye. Hearing ear and seeing eye. Kailangan nakarinig. Kay Lord, na siya ang magiging partner, siya yung kalakasan mo dahil ang pag-aasawa ay dapat kalakasan ng buong pamilya. Hindi lang kalakasan ng mag-aasawa. Kasi mahirap na ang napangasawa mo pala ay kalakasan mo lang pero kabigatan siya ng buong pamilya. This must not be your portion. Mahirap, imbis na ibibless, magiging sumpa kasi ang mga mahal sa buhay hindi na bless kasi kabigatan siya ng mga kapatid. Hindi pwede yon tama ba? O sa mga Jew na mag-asawa, this is my paalala, this is my reminder doon sa mga malapit ng magsipag-asawa. Hindi namin hinahadlangan ng pag-asawa. In fact, pinagpe-pray po namin kayo na ang maging kapartner nyo talaga ay God-ordained. God orchestration, walang magkamali dahil hindi yan na ibabalik, hindi yan na isasooli. Hindi yan na, iba, na isasooli na pag nakabili ka ng hindi kasya sa'yo, pwede mo ibalik sa mall o pwede mo ipamigay. Kung hindi na pwede ibalik sa mall, sa store na pinagbilhan mo, pwede mo ipamigay kasi di mo kasya. Hindi po yan ganon. Okay? Kaya... Kailangan tiyak na tiyak tayo at kapag natiyak na natin, tiyakin natin na magiging kalakasan siya ng buong pamilya. Kasi klan ngayon ang pinag-uusapan dahil nasa preparation tayo to be in the great day of the Lord. Paano kung in the journey, in fulfilling God's mandate upon our lives, yung natanggap mo, uh, yung partner na binigay sa iyo ni Lord na akala mo binigay na nag-presumptuous lang pala, ay hindi pala kagaanan o kalakasan ng pamilya. Mahirap na, okay? So, hindi ko sinabi na yung mga nakatanggap na dyan ay mali ang natanggap nyo, no? Bear with me what is in my heart. Ang concern ko is the future. The future of you. Kasi kagaya ng testimony ni Levely, ang tingin ni Lord sa'yo ay generation agad. Ang tingin ni Lord sa'yo at sa akin is nations and generations. Hindi man si Lord nakat, nakatingin sa atin as one person, no. Ang tingin agad sa atin ni Lord, generation, yung magiging anak na ko at magiging anak ng mga anak ko at ng mga magiging apo ng anak ko. 
Doon si Lord nakatingin kasi He is the God of nation and generations. The mind of God, the mind of our good and faithful God is full of man. Anong nasa isipan ni Lord? Ikaw at ako at ang mga generation na susunod. Anong nasa puso ni Lord? Ikaw at ako. Kaya nga pinadala niyo yung kaisa-isa niyang anak eh. Para ikaw at ako ay maging kapartner niya on the ground, maligtas tayo. Hindi tayo forever doomed to hell. But to be saved from everything because of the disobedience of man. So ito ay paalala para hindi niyo ako masisi na hindi kayo pinaalalahanan. Titiyakin, wag magmadali sa pagpapakasal. Titiyakin na ang mapapangasawa ay kalakasan ng buong mag-anak at ng pamilya. Kasi, sasabihin, Mami Grins, hindi naman ako, hindi ko naman papakasamahan ang nanay at tatay at saka mga kapatid. Yes, pero ayaw natin maging pabigat. Tama ba? Dapat maging kalakasan tayo. Kalakasan. Halimbawa ako, nag, nung mag-asawa, Nung nag-say yes ako kay Lord na mag-aasawa mag ako at sa kay Pastor Jerry, halimbawa, pinosisyon ko ang sarili ko na ano man ang mangyari, kalakasan ako ng pamilya nila. Ano man ang mangyari, hindi ako dapat makakadiplit ng pabigat o hindi ako magiging pabigat sa pamilya nila. At lalo na sa kanya, sa magiging asawa natin. Ganun dapat tayo mag-posture pag malapit na, oh, ngayon na magpe-prepare tayo sa pag-aasawa. Uh, okay? Napunta tayo doon. May mga malapit na mag-asawa. Kailangan hindi tayo pabigat. Unang-una sa ating magiging esposo o esposa. Pangalawa sa pamilya ng ating magiging kapartner. Remember, marriage is for strength. Marriage is for partnership. Marriage is for the mandate. Mandato ng Panginoon, hindi natin mga sariling kamandatuhan na mga iniisip natin, mga selfish ambition. No, marriage is fulfilling the mandate of God in our life. Sa dalawa na kayong destiny ang, mag ang magsasama. So ito yung mga babantayan halimbawa sa mga preparation. Anyway, magkakaroon tayo ng topic doon sa mga mag-aasawa. Magkaroon tayo ng topic na panibago doon sa bago mag-asawa, mag-prepare, or yung bago, halimbawa, nakadecide kayo magpapakasal, please have a pre-counseling session. Mag-pray kayo kay Lord kung sino ang makakapag-guide sa inyo, makapag-counsel sa inyo na may pre-counseling, pre-marriage counseling. Mahalaga ito. Para alam nyo agad, pagkatapos ng kasal, reality will kick in. Hindi yung Bunggang-bunggang sa kasal, okay, magandang kasal. Pagkatapos ng kasal, yun ang realidad ng pag-aasawahan. Ano ang itatakbo nyo? Anong dapat maging mindset? Anong dapat maging posture? Pag may challenge na. At hindi natin dapat isipin na ang mga challenges ay isa lang ang haharap. Dapat mag-asawa. Okay. So, yun lang ipatalastas. Sa mga hinahanda na ni Lord mag-asawa. Okay? God's desire for you is to multiply our own kind. ba? Diba? Our own kind, Christ-likeness. Our own kind, Christ dapat ang mamultiply, hindi our own way, hindi yung mga flesh natin or anything. Okay? Our series for this week or this week at sa darating na mga linggo is Governing rules and prayer partnership with God. Governing, governing rules and prayer partnership with God. Dalangin ko ng bawat isa makastablish ng robust prayer life sa taong bago magtapos ang March. Ito ang panalangin at desire ng puso ko na bawat select araw na umaaten dito ay makapag-establish ng kanyang prayer partnership with God because when we pray with God it brings result in our life in our family sa clan at sa bawat isa but before i go further naalala ko si nilagay ko doon sa group yung song na walk in your ways familiarize it yun ang team song niyo muna ngayon with the lord 
when you pray, yun ang awitin kung maaari hanggang mag-sink deep na ikaw at ako ay maging bigatin san. Eh, trinay sana namin ni Joan na mag-worship tayo dito, yung walk in your ways, pero medyo challenging sa Zoom kasi yung signal at saka yung, yung dating, so hindi magkakaroon ng pag-synchronize. Kaya I, I'm encouraging each one na familiarize that song or pakinggan nyo na mag-sink deep sa ating spirito. That yun yung portion mo at portion ko ngayon. Amen? So, our one of my goal to the select arrow and my desire is that after March, so January tayo ngayon, pagdating ng April, nakastablish ka ng prayer life. Yung bang tipong hindi matinag-tinag na prayer life na kahit anong challenges, you can still pray in the posture of the Spirit. Yung hindi na destabilize ng anumang bagay, ng anumang sitwasyon. You can still connect. You can still pray because your prayer life is already established. So, governing rules in prayer partnership with God. Our lesson objectives for this week is, number one, to know how we can accurately partner with God in prayer. To know how we can accurately partner with God in prayer. Number two, to walk and operate as God's ambassador. To walk and operate as God's ambassador. Number one is to know how we can accurately partner with God in prayer. Number two, to walk and operate as God's ambassador. It means to operate as God's partner on the earth, on the ground. Isn't it a great privilege for you, generation, and for me to become God's partner? Kung anong business niya, kung anong gusto niyang ipababa mula sa langit, ikaw at ako muna ang dadaluyan. And when we decree, when we prophesy, it would be always in motion. Angelic hosts are the reinforcement to bring forth that prayer and declaration that we have in the realm of the Spirit to come to pass. So number three, to learn the dynamic of prayer when we partner with God. To learn the dynamic of prayer when we partner with God. Number four, to know and understand that to pray is to build in the spirit. To know and understand that to pray is to build in the spirit. And lastly, number five, to establish a healthy and robust prayer life to establish a healthy and robust prayer life okay five prayer objectives before i go to the lesson main lesson i would like to honor the presence of all the parents that are beside their children of course mrs cole is with us today mrs otero i think mrs montano and the rest of your parents that are with you in this select arrow and I thank God for your life. And the other select arrow young adult, my friend Josephine Chua and Mrs. Garais and the rest. Pastor Nayumi is, I think, here. I also would like to honor his her presence. Okay, so what is prayer? Malalaman natin sa series na ito. What is prayer? Why we need to pray? What is the purpose of prayer? And when to pray? What to pray? And how to pray and who will pray? Sino ba talaga ang... Because everybody pray. Do you believe that? The Roman Catholic, the Muslim, the Hindu, everybody pray. Now, do you believe this? Everybody, almost everyone that know, that, that believe that there is God pray. Pero sino lang ang sinasagot ni Lord? Those who are praying according to His will and with faith. By faith kasi ang pagpe-pray. Okay? So malalaman natin. Let's open our Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 and verse 20. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new person. Do you believe this? Sabi sa NIV, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are we in Christ? Amen. 
Therefore, you are a new creation. Pag meron ka ng 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, and verse 20. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. In verse 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Sa ibang translations, we are therefore Christ's representative on earth. Christ's representative as though God were making his appeal to, through us. We implore you in on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Do you believe this? That when we receive Christ, we become, immediately we become his ambassador. Kaya lang, kailangan natin palaguin ang Christ. Kasi hindi naman magiging accurate representative ang baby, ang representation niyan somehow. Kung di pa nadil ang mga tantrums. Kung hindi pa nadil ang mga pagiging bipolar. ba? So kailangan, ang pupositionan natin mga bata ngayon is as Christ ambassador. Christ representative. Pag nasa pamilya, position yourself as Christ representative. Pag nasa school, position yourself as Christ representative. God's partner in that school, in that family. Pag nasa clan, position yourself as Christ ambassador. Christ representation. Kingdom representative. Kaya hindi ka pwede mag-misbehave. Hindi ka pwede makapag-throw ng tantrums. Mami misrepresent natin si Christ. Maliwanag, sabi niya, Therefore, if anyone who is in Christ, are we in Christ? If yes, we are a new creation. Sabihin mo sa iyong katabi, kung may katabi ka, ikaw ay bago nang nilalang. Wala na ang luma. Tama? The old has gone, the new has come. All this from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. So sabihin mo rin sa katabi mo, hindi ka ni-repair, ikaw ay bago. Walang ni-repair, bago tayong lahat. Kaya ang bago, kailangan pag nag-operate tayo sa bago to the newness, Christ-likeness, okay? Who is Christ? na kinikerry natin, kailangan yun ang ma-represent natin the way we think, the way we act, the way we behave, our ways. Kailangan well-represented natin ang Panginoon sa buhay na ito. If we receive Christ, kailangan ang mag-manifest Christ. If we carry Christ life, kailangan ang mag-manifest Christ life, Christ likeness. Kapariho ng pag-ugali ni Kristo kasi nakakaya naman Born again Christian ako. Tapos, pero kung mag-asta ako, kung manalita ako, kung mag-isip ako, ang layo sa pagiging Kristo, nakakahiya. Pero hindi natin yun maging portion. Dapat doon tayo pumusisyon ng tama. Kaya ang generation nyo maraming confusion, alam nyo ba? Kasi ang karadalasan, ang nakikita nyo Kristiyano ay hindi well represented ang Christ na kineri. Mga religious. Alam na natin ang mga religious, di ba? Born again Christian pero hindi nagbabago. Mga passionate sa worship pero walang binabago sa buhay, sa lifestyle. Kaya confuse ang generation nyo. But redeem that. Take that back. Kailangan ikaw. Kung hindi na represent na isang Christiano na kakilala mo, why not you? Mag-umpisa sa iyo. Umpisa sa akin. Hindi na ipapalayo pa o hindi na muna isipin na ay pag nagbago siya saka ako magbago ay nako pagharap natin sa Panginoon hindi mo naman masasabi pagharap natin sa Panginoon sa judgment day hindi mo naman masasabi kasi Lord ang mami ko hindi nagbago kaya di rin ako nagbago <laughs> Umpisahan na natin sa atin ito okay be responsible 
be responsible although ang mga magulang is responsibility na mag responsibilidad na maging role model sa kanilang mga anak eh, pero kung what if hindi nga kasi ang may problema ang connection may problema sa accuracy ng kanilang connectivity so ano ang ang gagawin natin be responsible ikaw na ang magiging responsable kasi pagharap natin sa harapan ng Panginoon during the judgment day ay hindi natin pwede maaar o maaaring sabihin na Panginoon, hindi kasi nagbago ang tatay ko, born again naman, kaya hindi ko rin binago ang aking lifestyle. Hindi mo na yun pwede sabihin doon because you are of age. You are you are already in the in the this kapanahunan o nasa maturity ka na, alam mo na ang tama at mali. Pag alam mo na ang tama at mali, and therefore decide to do what is right. Kahit na may conflict sa yung thought na iba ang nakikita mo, iba ang sinasabi sa nakikita kasi maraming Kristiyano sa kapaligiran natin, they are not they are, they are not walking their talk. So ibahin natin ito. Tayo na ang magbago. We need to walk our talk. Kung ang sa kapaligiran nating mga Kristiyano, make a difference. Para pagharap natin sa harapan ni Lord, eh makapagsasabi ang Panginoon with open arms, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hindi mo ikinompromiso ang salitang tinanggap mo bagkos binago mo ang sarili mo, kumonekta ka ng tama, nilinya mo ang buhay mo ayon doon sa salitang iyong tinatanggap. So, it's tough, but we really need to decide every day to do what is right and to do what is of righteousness. Ito yung titingnan natin. What is prayer, mga bata? It is a partnership walk with God. This is in my own perspective, okay? This is not the universal meaning of the prayer. This is, ito yung nilalakaran ko, okay? What is prayer? It is a partnership walk with God. By the grace of God, ito yung naunawaan ko, kaya ito yung nilalakaran ko. Thus, it is a dialogue and not a monologue conversation or transaction. To my own perspective and understanding about prayer, by the grace of God, now which is I am outworking and doing, prayer is a partnership walk with God. Thus, or therefore, it is a dialogue and not a monologue conversation or kind of conversation or transaction. Dialogue. Can you imagine, children, can you imagine, dear Select Arrow, that God is making you his prayer partner? Not just that you will pray and he will bless you, but you will pray and he will do the result. He will bring result. And when you pray, God is obligated to perform something because you are his partner. Can you believe that? Can you have that? So signs and wonders and miracles are following, are just lining up because hindi ka mapahindian ni Lord. Dahil naging pinosture mo ang sarili mo, nakapartner niya. So God wants you and me to be a custodian of his secret. Sabi ni Dr. Ton De Bakari, you want to be uh, a custodian of his secret. Kaya kung gusto natin malaman ang sikreto ng Diyos, kailangan mag-posture tayo as his partner. Naalala nyo ang account na Abraham doon nung tutunawin ni Lord ang Sodom and Gomorrah. Sabi ni Lord, can I hide something to my friend Abraham? Of course, I will not. This is my version, pero yun ang context. Pwede ba ako, pwede ko bang pagtaguan ang kaibigan ko at ang kapartner ko sa lupa na sa Abraham? Siyempre, hindi ko siya pwede pagtaguan. God honors their partnership. The Lord honors Abraham's and a covenant with God. Kaya hindi niya pwedeng mapahindian. Kaya nga, nung nag-intercede sa Abraham na Lord, pag may ten na righteous sa Sodom and Gomorrah, gugunawin mo pa, sabi ni Lord, hindi, hindi ko gugunawin kung may ten. Kaso walang ten. Kaya sabi ng mga great man of God, Dr. Jonathan David, Papa Jonathan, and Dr. Tondi Bakari, sabi nila, ginunaw ni Lord, tinunaw ni Lord ang Sodom and Gomorrah dahil sa mayroon siya ng hindi nakita doon. Ano ang hindi niya nakita? Ten righteous na inintercede ni Abraham. 
nakukuha ba natin yung privilege ng pagiging partner ni Lord? Okay, let's open our Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 9 to 23. For we are God's fellow workers. Sa ibang translation, for we are God's partner. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. Verse 11, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of its man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? Do you believe this? The Holy Spirit is is the one living in us. Kaya hindi pwede magpakontamina, hindi pwede mag, mag-accumulate tayo ng toxins sa ating katawan, sa ating spirito. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him for God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. Do you believe that? We are God's temple. Okay, verse 18. Do not deceive yourselves. If anyone of you thinks he is wise, by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then no more boasting about men. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours. And you are of Christ and Christ is of God. Do you believe this word of the Lord? We are God's temple. The Holy Spirit lives in us. It is a privilege, children. It is a, fav- a privilege and favor for you and for me to become God's partner on the ground. To what? To build the kingdom here on earth. Pero pinapadaan muna sa atin. Sa atin muna binibuild ng Holy Spirit. Ang kanyang kingdom, kaya sinabi niya dyan, the foundation is Christ. Diba? When we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, and when people above us ay nilalatagan tayo ng kanyang mga salita, word is dimension of Christ. Word is God. God is word. Tama ba? Part and parcel of Christ's life ang nilalatag sa atin, yung mga foundation. Kaya hindi pwede natin makuntamina ang mga bagay na nilalatag sa atin ng Diyos. Kasi pag kuntaminado, we cannot be an accurate representation of God on earth. How can we become an accurate representation of His kingdom and of His presence in the domain, in our loved ones? Kapag kuntaminado tayo, mali lagi ang representation. Kapag mayroon tayo ng wrong na carry, kahit Christian, sobra pa rin mainitin ang ulo, ang ulo. May mga tantrums pa rin. Ay nako, baguhin na yan. Baguhin yan. The soonest way possible, kailangan mabago yan. Okay. So, paano tayo makapag-partner kay Lord kung hindi tayo natin ito babaguhin ng mga bagay na ito? Number one, number one, ito ay of course, in isa-isa ko para alam natin lakaran. What is governing rules in prayer partnership with God? Number one, God consciousness is a must in prayer. God consciousness. When we are conscious of His presence, we will honor and respect our partnership with Him. God consciousness is a must in prayer. When we are conscious of His presence, we know and we will know more how to behave in His presence. Hindi yung nagpepreka, O oh, kala rama masya larayanda, Lora mama larayanda, 
nagsiksik na pala, tapos may nakuhang lisa, gumanon. Aba, aba. <laughs> Paano yung representation natin yan kay Lord? Hindi pwede yon, okay? Kung, kung paano tayo mag-posture in public, in our prayer, in our partnership with God, ganun din dapat sa ating private. Ang ating lifestyle sa labas, o ang, the way we behave outside is just a result on how we behave inwardly at home, in our prayer closet. So titingnan natin, God consciousness is a must in in our prayer partnership with God. When we have this attitude, God consciousness, it will make us genuine and true in praying to Him. Hindi tayo yung bubbling, ano lang, walang, salita ng salita, ang isip ay kung saan-saan. Basta lang makapag-pray, pero ang isip ay doon sa nililigawan o doon sa crush o doon sa gustong bilhin sa online, diba? o doon sa game. Diba? Hindi magandang posture. Pag may God consciousness tayo, alam na alam mo na ang iniisip mo ay alam din ni Lord. Kaya magbibehave dapat. Ibibehave mo ang utak mo, ang mind mo, ikukontrol mo. Sabihin mo, ay hindi yan pwede. I'm in the presence of God. You should captivate what the thoughts in our mind. Hindi ka pwedeng dalhin ng maling kaisipan sa labas ng panalanginan, kahit nagpe-pray ka na nagsasalita ka, pero ang isip mo ay hindi naka-line, naka-connecta sa pinapanalangin mo, ay hindi yun tama. So, God consciousness, kailangan meron tayo nito. We will be always mindful. When we are conscious with the presence of God in our prayer, we will be always mindful on how we behave in our prayer. We will be always vigilant in captivating our thoughts, in disciplining Training our mind to just be in alignment to what God wants us to pray. Kasi maraming Kristiyano, I believe, na ang nanalangin pero ang kaisipan ay hindi nakalinya sa kanyang pinapanalangin. Hindi konektado sa spirito. So, wala. Kaya mabilis madestabilize. Maraming uh, daladala, maraming mga puno ang kaisipan ng mga toxins. Dapat hindi natin ginagawa yon. Learn how not to dwell on toxins in our thoughts. Ano mga toxin? Yung mga curse, mga negative, mga wrong, mga, mga negative towards the future, fear, anxiety. Kailangan matuto na tayong mag-captivate. Naalala ko yung testimony ni, uh, ni Kaina, di ba? That uh, she's so deliberate in captivating and training her mind kasi yun ang battle. Remember, nagiging battlefield ang mind when we allow it. But the moment we stop it, wala. The enemy cannot. The enemy cannot. Ikaw ang dapat may say. Kanino ba yung kaisipan? Sa jablo ba yan? Hindi, sa atin. Or therefore, sino ang mag, sino mag-aalaga ng kaisipan? Ibibigay mo ba sa jablo ang Hindi po, pero marami ang nagbibigay na kristyano sa, ng kaisipan sa jablo mag-entertain ng worriness, mag-entertain ng anxiety, mag-entertain ng negative, mag-entertain ng what if, what if, what if. Mm, ang dami. Kaya pinahintulutan niya na ang jablo tuwang-tuwa, nag-explore sa kaisipan, nag-build ng strongholds, nag-build ng mga fortresses sa kaisipan ng isang kristyano. Kaya ang kristyano na yan, kristyano lang sa pangalan, pero sa gawa at sa pamumuhay, hindi kristyano. Why? Sino ang nakapag-build ng fortress and uh, stronghold sa kaisipan? The enemy. Take back your mind now. Can we do that? Take it back. Do not be so casual na kunting, uh, di ba ang abalance of deception na gumpisa yan sa natanggap natin sa spirit at na pick up ng mind? Doon yun. Kaya ma maging vigilant tayo. Hindi na na deplete ang strength mo ng thought na yon and therefore that's it oh, that is of the enemy kasi if the thought is of God ma mabibuild tayo mabibuild tayo depende yon sa reaction at sa action natin so when we are operating in God consciousness our faith is growing rising up knowing that we are connecting to God to the God of heaven that every impossible will become possible because we believe, because we know that we are God's partner. Kaya ang mga imposible ay hindi sa'yo 
hindi sa'yo nakaka... Oh, pwede kaya yung gawin ni Lord? Eh, ano kaya yon Doubt na yun. di ba Spirit of doubt. Walang imposible sa Panginoon. Kaya lang nagiging imposible because our mind said so. Saan nyo nag-umpisa? Sa spirito, doubt, spirit of doubt. Na-pick up ng mind at mineditate mo, nag-dwell ka na doon. Oo nga, baka hindi nga gawin ni Lord. Oo nga. Ay, wala na. Ano ang sinasabi ng salita? Do not believe the report of this world. Only believe the report of the Lord. His word. Pag may sitwasyon tayo, ano ang sinasabi ni Lord dyan sa sitwasyon na yan? Yun ang paniniwalaan natin. Okay, God consciousness. Kailangan mas ito. Every time we pray, kailangan ang mind captivated. Pag hindi nakalinya ang mind mo sa gagawin, sa gustong gawin ng spirit mo, settle it first. Settle it. Huwag ka munang mag, mag kung ano-anong sasabihin na ang mind mo ay hindi nakaset. Okay? sa kung ano ang maari ang gawin ni Lord na pinanampalataya ng spirito mo. Ang turo ko dati sa mga select hour dito, when there is an attack mentally, sa thought, may attack eh, blast off. When I say blast off, kipalaramama sulurukutularayanda, shularabaka talaribo boloroyondo. Blast off in praying in the spirit. It helps. It can help you. Ito ay Tatandaan natin. So, spirit, soul, and body must be in one alignment when we are praying. Spirit, soul, and body will be a position or must be in a position of God consciousness. The mind, will, and emotions is totally, completely surrendered and submitted to the God of heaven. Hindi, wala kang, wala ka ng, ano pa, sariling kalooban, lahat ng kalooban mo ay surrendered lahat sa Panginoon. We need to operate like Christ as God's begotten Son. Can we believe this? Paano po naging, paano, ano po ang begotten Son? ba diba sa John 3.16? For God so loved the world that He gave His begot, the begotten Son. Si Christ naging begotten Son. Bakit ang kanyang kalooban ay submitted and fully surrendered to the God the Father? Wala siyang sariling agenda. Ang agenda niya ay ang kung ano ang agenda ng God the Father sa buhay niya. Dapat ganun tayo puposisyon. Ang mga selfish agenda natin, ang mga agenda natin na mga magpasikat, mga magkagay ng sa mundo, worldliness, ay nako. Yan ang mga kinakapagkapita ng kontaminasyon. Kaya nga, I am challenging everyone every select arrow to really submit our will, surrendered our will once and for all to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit so that we can be God's begotten sons and daughters in this season. Alam nyo ba ang pinapamana ni Lord sa mga begotten son, mga bansa, nations? That is in Psalms. Madadating tayo doon as we progress in this series. Ano ang pamana ni Lord sa mga bigatin sons, nations and generations? To build the generation, to occupy the nations. Nations is God's people, tama ba? O literal na mga bansa, yun ang ipapamana. So become like Christ, God's bigatin son. When our will is unconditionally, wholeheartedly, totally, completely submitted to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It means you are His begotten Son. Mahirap ba? Simple, pinakukomplicate lang ng kaisipan na mali ang begotten Son. Maging honorable tayo as God's covenanted people on earth. Like Abraham. Abraham is the father of many nations. Father Abraham is covenanted with God. Tinupad ni Lord ang covenant niya kay Abraham. Generations ang nag-benefit nito, including you, including me. How about kung ikaw mismo at ako mismo ay magkikipagtipan, makipag-covenant kay Lord as His people, as His sons, as His daughters, na imagine mo ba ang maaaring gawin ni Lord sa pumamagitan mo, sa buhay mo, at sa pumamagitan mo? ba? Diba? So, 
Kaya nga doon kung ma- ma- matatandaan nyo doon sa song na pinawad ko sa group, Walk in Your Ways, pakinggan nyo yon. I want to be a begotten son. I want to be in covenant. I want to be circumcised in my heart. Ang circumcision sa heart yung nariribyok, hindi sumasama ang loob pag nariribyok. Pag form, walang violent reaction. Build the ball. Sons materials. Pag sinabing circumcised in our heart, pag nariribyok, hindi sumasama ang loob. E kung ngayon, hanggang ngayon, may masik, marinig lang kayo sa mga mahal sa mga pastor nyo na rebuke na mga paalala sa inyo sumasama ang kalooban nyo binibigyan nyo ng maling malisya ay kailangan ipapa-circumcise pa ang puso let the word circumcise your heart your spirit kasi pag hindi circumcise ang spirit ng isang kristyano prone to contamination surrender it to God let the Holy Spirit and His word God's word, circumcise our heart para walang pagtataguan ang kontaminasyon. Pag hindi kasi circumcise sa mga lalaki ito ha, pag hindi circumcise, mayroon ng tinak- kinakapitan lagi ng contaminants kasi mayroon ng madumi. Pero kailangan mas circumcise tayo. Tama ba? Sa heart. Pag circumcise sa heart, teachable, moldable, buildable, humble, Walang violent reaction, sinabi ba niya yan? Ay, pastor pa naman siya. Bakit niya yan sinabi sa akin? Wow, mga ganyang reaction. Sana ay dalangin ko na wala na yan sa inyo ngayon. Very, very crucial ang season natin ngayon. Okay, mga bata, number two. Governing rules and prayer partnership with God, number two. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. Okay, prayer is a dialogue. Pag sinabing dialogue, dalawa kayo na nag-uusap. Si- sino ba? May nanligaw ba dito na ikaw lang ang salita ng salita? Di ba naka-engage ka pag nagsalita ang nililigawan mo? O kahit hindi pa nga nagsasalita, di ba? Hindi pwedeng ikaw lang ang salita ng salita. When we say uh, dialogue, kayong dalawa nag-uusap, di ba? When we pray, Kaya kaya maraming Kristiyano ang nag uh, nananalangin ng na walang kasagutan kasi monolog ng monolog. Hindi nga inalam, Lord, ano po ang dapat ko ipanalangin ngayon? Basta diretso lang siyang panalangin. Malalaman natin ang mga dapat nating maging behavior at mga ways when we pray to God. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Ito ay sa ulado na halos ninyo, di ba? Sabi niya, sabi ni Lord, call unto me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Do you believe this? Amen. So, dialogue. Sabi ni Lord, call unto me and I will answer you. Hindi pwede, call unto me and I will not answer. Diba? Dialogue. Pag nagpray tayo, hindi pwedeng hindi magsumagot ang Panginoon. Pero paano tayo manalangin? Sabi sa Matthew chapter 6, tingnan natin ang pattern ng pananalangin. Bago tayo mag-end, tapusin natin to para malakaran na natin this week. Five. Sabi niya ni Lord, when you pray, kasi sa Ang account nito, meron ng disciple na nagtanong, Lord, paano, paano po ba mag-pray? Pwede niyo po ba kaming turuan manalangin? Disciple na yun, ha? So, ibig sabihin, nakikita nila lagi ang Panginoong Yesus manalangin. Pero iba ang dynamic, kaya naisip niya, bakit, bakit di ta- natin tanungin si Lord? So, ang sagot ng Panginoon, and when you pray, so, eh, pag sinabi ng Bible, when, Ibig sabihin, expected niya na ikaw at ako ay mananalangin lagi. Tama ba? Hindi sinabing if. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on bubbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. 
Do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Klarado ba ito? Ulitin natin sa verse 8. Do not be like them. Sinong them? Pagans, unbeliever, hidden. Do not be like them, sabi ni Lord, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Alam ni Lord, ang kailangan natin bago tayo humingi o bago tayo manalangin. Sino ba sa inyo ngayon? Tatanungin ko kayo. Sino ba sa inyo ngayon, mga bata? Ang paggising sa umaga, luluhod sa harapan ng iyong nanay kasi kailangan mo ng almusal. I believe wala. di ba? If the earthly mother, the earthly father, ginagawa ito sa iyo at sa akin, how much more the heavenly father na hindi ibibigay ang inyong pangangailangan at ang ating pangangailangan. So, paano ang prayer? Sabi, ni, sa, sabi sa verse 9, This then is how you should pray. Ito yung pattern ng prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors and led us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Okay, yan ang pattern. Isa-isahin natin paano ang Panginoong Jesus manalangin. This is all according to my own understanding and perspective. Again, hindi ko sinasabi na ito ang universal meaning nito, but sa aking naintindihan at nilalakaran sa biyaya ng Panginoon at kung paano ako manalangin, ay ito po ang ginagawa ko. So, mga select arrow, ito ang pattern ng pananalangin. Pag sinabing Our Father, ano? Ang basis ng panalangin natin is by our relationship. Sino ang tinatawag natin? Father. Pag sinabing Father, Our Source. Our all in all, He is our everything. Relationship not based on religion. When we say our Father, it means you are sons, you are daughters, you are children, we are children of God. Siyang tatay. So di ba nakakainsulto sa Panginoon kung pupunta tayo, Lord, wala po kaming pangalmosal ngayon. Panginoon, di ba Nakaka, nakakahiya naman. Sa tatay natin nga na earthly ay hindi tayo hindi natin magawa yun. Sa harapan pa ng Panginoon, di ba? Parang siguro sasabihin, ano ba ang pinag-iisip nito anak ko? <laughs> so our father, the context is relationship. It's not about religion. How we relate to God. If He is our father, then He knows already what we need before we pray. He knows already. He is our source. He is our everything. He is our all in all. Okay. Who is, uh, where, is, where is our Father? In heaven. Our Father in heaven. To be in heaven is to be in the Spirit. When we pray, we say, Our Father, my source, my all, my everything, my completeness, my heavenly Father, Abba Father. So, who is in heaven? In the spirit. To be in heaven means to be in the spirit. We must pray in the spirit. We are praying by faith, believing that God will perform, that God will answer. Not natural, but we because we are spiritual. So, ano ang, ang pag-posture natin sa spirito? Ang kinukunitahan natin, Father in heaven, our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. Kaya ang kontaminadong nananalangin, may duda tayo kung sinasagot ang panalangin. Kasi banal ang Ama. Our Father is a holy God. So, holy be your name. Our God is a holy God. Therefore, we must approach Him in purity. We must approach Him in clarity. We must approach Him in holiness. No contamination inside our spirit. Kaya nga sabi sa Matthew, kung meron tayo, kung offended tayo at mag-aalay tayo ng sacrifice to the Lord, iwanan niyang iaalay at makipag-ayos muna para walang kontaminasyon kasi walang koneksyon. 
pagkontaminado ang spirit kaya nga mapupudpud ang salitang kung nagagasgas at napupudpud ang salitang be pure, be clean, be clear, be uncontaminated, pudpud na sa atin. Pero paulit-ulit ako, paulit-ulit tayo sa lalo na sa GX, maging clean because this is one of the mightiest weapon that we could ever had have in the realm of the spirit. Pag pure tayo, pag clean, pag walang malis, clear ang kaisipan, walang mga carry na wrong sa ating spirit, sa dimension you are so powerful, the enemy cannot touch you because he has no good in your life. Yun ang dapat pupositionan natin. So our Father, the source, my source, my everything, my all in all, my Holy Father, who is in heaven, in the spirit. Kaya ang panalangin natin must be in the spirit. Kapag nanalangin tayo emotionally, hindi yan makarating doon. <laughs> Dito lang yan. Kapag nanalangin tayo dahil in the flesh, no, hindi yan, hindi yan aprobado sa Panginoon. The pattern is in heaven, in the spirit. Holy be your name. He cannot partner to a contaminated body in on the earth he cannot partner to a christian or yeah to to us if we are full of toxin in the spirit why he is a holy father he is holy god holy be your name kaya nga pag nagpray tayo lord you are my god wonderful sovereign powerful my all in all my completeness you are holy oh god and therefore Our conscience will speak kapag nandun tayo sa prayer room natin, sa prayer closet natin. Ang conscience mag-speak kung meron kang offense, hindi makakabuti sa atin. So ano yung next na pattern? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Na ang kaharian mong na-build sa realm of the spirit, maibaba sa lupa sa pumamagitan ko bilang iyong kapartner. So ano ang need ni Lord? Ano ang need ni Lord? That His kingdom come will be built on the earth, will expand on earth. May need po ba si Lord? I believe ito ang need ni Lord na ang kanyang kaharian na nasa realm of the spirit, maibaba niya sa lupa, ma-extend sa domain of education, ma-extend sa government kaya nga ikaw at ako ay kailangan mag-rise up on a whole new level mag-mature mabilisin mag-accelerate ang pag-mature natin si Lord nangangailangan ng mga kapartner para ang extension ng kanyang kaharian in every domain in every nation in every generation ikaw yun at ako ang sino mang mag-respond sa panawagan ng Panginoon ngayon to become his voice to become his partner What the privilege that we have. Ang pamana at ang inheritance natin is nations, generations. So ano ang, ang kailangan natin? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Kagaya ng sa langit, maibaba sa lupa. Build na ito sa langit. Na-imagine nyo bang sinasabi ko, okay, imagine natin lahat. Sa place of the spirit, sa spiritual realm, into a, in spiritual world, di ba? Tinuro ko na that there is, this is an earthly world, eh, material, ito natural. Mayroon ng spiritual. Sa spiritual world, build na, tapos na, yari na ang kingdom ni Lord. Yun ang gusto niyang maibaba sa lupa, sa earth. Nakaharian. Sino ang gagamitin ni Lord na maging plat? form na maging gateway from na to bring that kingdom in the realm of the spirit to the earth ikaw at ako kaya nga ibinibuild ang righteousness sa mga buhay natin pag naging mature tayo sa righteousness ni Lord di ba extension ka ng kingdom pag na build ang peacefulness sa atin ni Lord extension ka ng kingdom Whether we like it or not, ang makamakakakita sa'yo, magtataka, what is in you that I really need to have also? Kingdom. Kaya nga, huwag kayo magpuporso ng mga worldly things dahil hindi yun ang pinapabuild ni Lord. Okay? Hindi yun ang pinapabuild. Actually, ang world, ang mga wor nasa world, mga nasa system, they are looking for what you have. Dapat hindi tayo mas insecure sa kanila. Okay, your father, my father knows what we need before we ask. 
Ano ang dapat ipanalangin natin? God's plan, God's desire, will, God's need is to bring down His kingdom from the heavenly places to the earth, to the natural. At nangangailangan siya ng generation na pangiging portal ng kaharian na ito na maging mat magmaterialize sa lupa. Amen? So when we are mindful of God's business, He will be mindful of our business as well. Sabi ni Dr. Tondi Bakari. Because heaven's agenda, God's agenda, what is in the heart of God, what is in the mind of God is you and me. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven na kung ano yung inestablish niya sa kalangitan, sa realm of the spirit, ay maibaba niya sa lupa. Pero kung nangangailangan siya ng mga partner para ma-build itong kaharian na ito, kahit di nyo pa man maintindihan ito ng iyong isipan ngayon, just receive it. Believe it. Do you believe this? Okay. Ano ang, ano ang next pattern? Ano ang sabi niya? Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. What is this bread? His word. The Lord Jesus Christ, kung bubuksan natin pero hindi na ngayon, sa susunod sigurong week, ang sabi ni, ni Panginoong Yesus, my meat and my bread, my food, is to do the will of my Father. My meat or my food is to do the will of my Father. So ang daily bread dito, God's will in our lives. Give us today our daily bread, God's word. Because, bakit daily? Kasi... The word that we received yesterday cannot, might not sustain us for today. Kaya kailangan daily ang pag-receive pag ng bread. Ano ang bread? Yung grace to fulfill or to finish our mandate strong. Ano yung bread dito? It's the food of our spirit para may sustenance, may strong, hindi na destabilize agad-agad. God's word na kaila na magbibuild sa spirit natin para ang faith maggrow, para ang faith magrise up. When our life is swallowed by His mandate, everything will just line up. Every needs that we have will just line up. Ano ang na, nakalagay pa dyan? Give us today my bag, O Lord. Give us today, Lord, my Nike. Mayroon ba dyan ang nakalagay? Give us today, Lord God, my my branded clothing, my branded bags. May nakalagay ba dyan sa... Wala! Diba? Alam nyo. Give us today our daily bread. Anong bread? My food. Sabi ni, ng Panginoong Yesus, my food, my meat is to do the will of the Father who sent me. So tayo din ganun ang pattern natin ng Panginoong Yesus, right? My daily bread, your daily bread must be God's word. Paano itong God's word? Siyang nagbibigay sa atin ng enlightenment. Siyang nagsustain ang spirit natin para yung ating mga challenges na hinaharap everyday may sustenance tayo. Hindi tayo basta-basta nararatel, hindi tayo basta-basta nadidestabilize. We can still stand strongly before God as His partner kasi may daily bread tayo. Because, bakit daily? Nagtanong ako, Lord, bakit nga ba daily ang sabi mo sa amin dito? Hindi ba yung revelation ko nung isang linggo na patuloy kong nilalakaran, ay baka pwede pa yun ngayon? It might not be. It might not, not sustain us. Yung revelation natin nung nakaraan, baka hindi na tayo masustain yan ngayon. Kaya nga, daily bread. Na doon sa last week na binasa natin sa Mark 1 verse 35, sinabi doon, Every day God, while is it Jesus Christ, while it is still dark, He went to a solitary place to pray. Diyos na siya. Panginoon ng mga Panginoon siya. He has all the reason not to pray. But He is still praying. He made and established a pattern for you and for me na eto nga, ako nga, Diyos na. Kailangan pa mag-pray. How much more you and me na hindi mag-pray? Tama ba? So, ano ang next? Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Pag sinabing forgive, or ibig sabihin, pag nagpe-pray tayo, dapat no offense. Nakakahiya sa harapan na pang ng Panginoon In, when you are praying pero offended ang puso mo, ay nakakahiya. May unforgiveness. May bitterness. Punong-puno ng galit. Lord, 
Galit na galit po ako kay ganito. Sinabi na naman niya kasi ng ganito. Sa tingin niyo, pakikinggan tayo ng Panginoon? Puno ka ng galit? Hindi. Kaya nga, wag ka na munang mag-pray. Sabi, sabi doon sa Matthew Maliwanag, when you are going to offer sacrifice before God, iwanan mo na yung sacrifice na yun, yung offering mo na yun, at makipag-ayos muna doon sa dapat ayusin. Kung may offense tayo, wag tayo manalangin na puno ng of- offended heart tayo. Kung bitter tayo, ay ayusin muna yan. Dahil tiyak na tiyak tayo, hindi ang pakikinggan ni Lord. Dahil sino ang willing makipag-partner? Ang banal na Diyos makikipag-partner sa puno ng maduming hindi pagpapatawad? Ang maang banal na Diyos makikipag-partner ba siya sa isang gustong willing mag-partner pero grabe ang offense? Hindi. Legit na lang. Tayo, tayo na nga lang Magano tayo, uy, pwede ba mag-prayer partner tayo? Tapos pag na-discover natin na punong-puno siya ng offended na offended pala siya, ang mga issue dati ay kargan, kargan, karga-karga pa niya ngayon, di ba? Mag-grieve ka, ay, siya pala yung ka-partner ko. Eh, kaya pala wala kang kasagutan sa aming panalangin kasi puno pala siya ng bitterness. Tayo nga yun eh, ganun. How much more God? Di ba? God's standard is so high na hindi pwedeng natin ibaba. Hindi po, kasi tao lang po eh. Kaya nga pinadala ng Panginoong Yesus. He, he has given us His begotten Son uh, to have a permanent solution for every bitterness, for every offense, for every unforgiveness. Jesus Christ is a permanent solution. Sino ang gagawa ng part natin? Tayo lang ang gagawa ng bahagi natin na magpatawad, na magforgive, na tanggalin ang offense because we are cleansed by the blood of Christ. Kaya lang hindi natin madesisyonan bakit minsan may religiosity, minsan ang self nag-ooperate, lab na lab niya ang self niya na yan ang nagdesabutahin ng kanyang katawagan sa Panginoon. Hindi yun dapat natin maging portion. And lastly, ano ang sabi? Lead us not into temptation. Ano ang sabi? Sino ang mag-leader sa atin? Sino ang maglilid sa atin? Si Lord. Holy Spirit must govern us, must lead us. Okay, but deliver us from the evil one. Paano tayo madideliver if we are led and governed by the Holy Spirit of God? Pero pag tinanggal natin itong led dito, leading, ah, nandun tayo lagi sa temptation. Ang pattern is lead us, Lord. Be my governor, Lord. Govern my life. Lead my life, oh dear Holy Spirit. Sa James chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 this is my last verse today James chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 but he gives us more grace receive grace amen but he gives us more grace that is why scripture says god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble tatandaan ito kaya ang mga may kay, ang mga nakapick up ng mga spirito ng kayabangan isukan niyo yan ngayon Sirain nyo yan sa buhay nyo ngayon, please. Ang espiritu ng arrogance ng mga kayabangan, ano mga pinagmamalaki natin na kung hindi sa Panginoong Yesus ay wala tayo ng mga ganito at mga bagay-bagay, bakit nagiging mayabang tayo? Kaya yun ang sa nagsasabutahi sa ating mga katawagan, nagsasabutahi sa mga bagay-bagay. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Ano ang verse 7? Submit yourselves then to God Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Ano ang formula? Mag-submit muna sa pangunguna at panggugobyerno ng Diyos, ng banal na spirito at ng kanyang salita sa ating mga buhay. Then doon lang tayo makaka-resist sa temptation. Doon lang tayo may kapangyarihan mag-say ng no to the temptation that is in front or around us. And the devil will flee. The devil will flee from us. Yun pa lang. Ano ang formula? Submit then to God. Lead by the Holy Spirit. Govern by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. Doon pa lang tayo may kapangyarihan magsabi ng I am saying no to this temptation. That's not my portion. Pero kung hindi tayo submissive sa pangunguna, at panggugobyerno ng banal na spirito kahit na anong resist mo niyan, walang kapangyarihan. Maliwanag ba ito? 
Kaya ang last pattern, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. He must be our leader. He must be our governor. Ito yung tinatawag na pattern. Can we build this or can we outwork this pattern this week sa ating panalangin? At madadaanan natin paano mag-establish ng robust prayer life at paano ako mag-umpisa ng pag-establish ng consistent prayer life na hindi mag-fall sa religiosity spirit but in the context of my relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Simply, pinakumplika lang ng maling kaisipan. Kaya pull down every wrong thought pattern. So nakita po natin yon our Father relationship, ang Lord natin, ang ating Ama. Pag ang ating Ama ay nandyan presente, lahat ng pangangailangan mo ay lilinya na lang. Kapag swallowed tayo ng mandato natin, ang mga bag na kailangan mo para sa mandate, lilinya na lang. I never pray for my bag. Never. Wala akong natandaan na nalangin ako ng bag. Lumilinya ang bag. I never pray for my clothes. Hindi ako nagnalangin. Sinet ko lang sa biyaya ni Lord ang ispiritu ko at ang puso ko that I must be swallowed by His mandate upon my life because I know everything will just line up. Lahat lumili niya. Sapatos mo, concern niya ni Lord. Hindi mo yan kailangan ipanalangin. Kung ang mga uh, natural nating mga, uh, mga earthly mother at earthly father, mahal na mahal tayo, ay hindi tayo pinapabayaan na mga pudpud ang chinelas at sapatos. How much more God? I believe ito ang umpisa natin. Sa taong ito, babagoy natin ang posture natin sa pananalangin na tayo talaga ay maging partner ng Panginoon. Bawat buka ng ating bibig, hindi pwedeng hindi maobliga ang Panginoon na hindi mag-perform ng miracles. Amen? Can we do that? Okay, let's all pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your wonderful word that built our spirit today. We thank you so much for the pattern in prayer na ito po ang malalakaran namin ngayong linggo. Naniniwala po kami, Panginoon, ang salitang ito ay mag, magbibigay sa amin ng biyaya that we will receive grace through this word, O Lord. Let the Holy Spirit's governing grace be in our lives, Lord God. We are allowing you to lead our lives. We are allowing, Lord God, the Holy Spirit to govern our lives Holy Spirit, Lord, become our governor, become our leader, O Lord God. O Lord, through our pastors as well, O Lord, in the church. We thank you so much for the grace, for the revelation, for the insight, Lord, that you have given unto us. Let this be our portion, Lord, especially the discerning of the Spirit, O Lord God. Our partnership with you will continually enhance, O Lord God, as a generation that will bring down heavens on the earth, O Lord God, through the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Word, because we believe it is not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Spirit. And we know, Lord God, that as we posture ourselves as your partner, you are the one who is going to perform and bring things, O Lord God, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.